Hello everyone, Val here. For today's video, I'm going to share with you how I got my Australian visa. So that's the step-by-step -step process, the timeline, and the requirements. Okay. So the visa that I have is a student visa. Um, just a disclaimer, I am not an education agent and or a migration agent. So I'm sharing this um, personal experience, my personal timeline. And if you want to, you know, just get ideas, tips, feel free to continue watching the All right. So the whole process took two months from the school application to the visa lodgement. I did not DIY. I have an agent. She's an education agent and at the same time, a migration agent. Um, it was the first week of May this year that I had an assessment call with her. Um, tinignan niya yung work experience ko, yung educational attainment ko in the Philippines. And um, she then suggested the best uh, course for me. So I have learned that it's less risky if yung kinuha mong course sa Australia is in line with your work experience or yung degree na nakuha mo in the Philippines, completed or not. So um, in my case, I graduated with a bachelor's um, degree in business administration. So yung sinadjust um, ng agent is a graduate diploma in management learning. One good thing of having an agent is affiliated na sila mostly sa mga schools in Australia. So, you know, you'll, you'll not be having a hard time looking for schools and emailing them or inquiring whatsoever so after ako na assess ng agent ko um, she already knew the best school for me so there um, she sent me an application form from that school and then um, dun na nag fill out ako ng details um, sinabmit ko yung requirements like my TOR my diploma um, my resume include ko na. Oh, the passport as well. Kasi titignan yun ng school. And yun. After that, those first weeks of May, after, right after our assessment call, um, nag-submit ako ng application form. Two days after, nag-respond yung school na I am eligible. Um, there, they sent me the letter of offer. Usually, pagka-submit mo ng application sa school, um, ini-interview ka pa. But in my case, hindi na nila ako in-interview kasi yung application form, doon na nila ina-assess if eligible ba ako to enroll or not. So, um, wala nang interview na naganap, I then receive the offer letter. So, when you get the offer letter, that means pinapa-enroll ka na. So, the following week, I paid. Yung school ko kasi, hindi sila monthly. Um, nag ask ng tuition payment. It's quarterly. So, I paid the first three months plus um, the enrollment or the processing fee ng whole application. So, there, when I paid the first three months worth ng tuition, um, si nabmit ko sa kanila yung receipt, and then, the following day, they sent me the COE. So, that's the confirmation of enrollment. That's, um, the number one requirement na hinihingi ng immigration when you lodge your visa. And then, yung school ko, hindi sila humihingi ng any proof of income. No show money required. Hindi sila humingi ng any bank statement. Hindi din sila humingi ng um, any IELTS result. However, they have this English proficiency test na pinatake nila sa akin from Oxford. And 
um, pumasa naman. So, yun. Yun yung last um, step na ginawa ko na related sa school. After that, um, sinabi ng agent na mag-wait lang daw for in preparation for the visa lodgement. So, while waiting, I started drafting my GTE. So, GTE stands for Genuine Temporary Entrant. So, that's the letter that you need to submit to the immigration para malaman nila yung purpose mo, why you're choosing Australia, why you're um, studying, and, you know, how is this going to benefit you in the future? So, yun yung um, GTE or Genuine Temporary Entrant. It's the most important requirement when you lodge a student visa. Kasi in Australia, when you apply for a student visa, walang interview. So yung GTE letter mo, yun yung magsaserve na um, explanation mo why you're um, applying for a student visa. Dun mo talaga binubuhos lahat ng explanation mo in order for the um, immigration to grant you the visa. So yun, um, while waiting for the next step na sasabihin ng agent, I have drafted my um, GTE already. So you know, um, walang waste na ano, time. So yun yung ginawa ko from the third week of May to the second week of June. Just, you know, purely writing my GTE. I'll try to make a different vlog on how I created my GTE kasi it's a whole different topic. That's how important it is. Kasi dun kasi bumabasa yung mga case officers na nag a ng application mo if deserving ka ba of a visa or not. Mostly, yung weight ng decision is dun ng gagaling kasi dun nakikita ng case officer if temporarily ka lang ba talaga magsistay sa Australia or you know, purely for studies nga lang ba yung pagpunta mo ng Australia. Kasi dun sa GTE mo, dun mo also in-explain na babalik ka talaga sa Pilipinas after your studies. So, that's um, the purpose of the GTE as well. To explain everything why, um, how it's going to be beneficial for you, yung plano mo after your studies. So yun, after I um, completed my GTE, si nagmit ko siya sa agent ko for her to review. And then when we were both happy with the final letter, um, doon na kami nag-decide na it's time to lodge the visa. So um, after that, I paid for my insurance, the OSHC. So that's the Overseas um, Student Health Cover. Um, it's also a requirement when you lodge your visa. So that's for the whole two years, kasi two years yung course ko. I also paid um, an agent fee. Yes, hindi free yung agent ko, but I am very, very happy with the service. Kasi from day one to, you know, until nag-grant yung visa ko, hindi niya talaga ako pinabayaan. Like, any chat or any message ko, any question, sinasagot niya po ako kaagad. So, I'm happy to pay with, um, you know, the agent fee. After that, when I already had my GTE, my COE from the school, my insurance, health insurance, um, doon na, nag na yung agent ko. nag kami June 27, 2022. And then, once nakapag-lodge ka na ng visa application mo, um, mag-e-email sa'yo yung IMI to request for a medical exam and yung biometrics. So, yung two, yung medical exam and yung biometrics, you need to have um, an appointment before ka pumunta doon. So, noong June, when I checked online, August 2022 pa yung next available date. Ganun kalala. Ganun kadami yung applicants. So, 
ang ginawa ko, pumunta ako the next day ng madaling araw sa medical examination, you know, location. I'm from Cebu, by the way. Nagtsaga akong pumila. And then, um, talagang sinabi ko lang sa staff doon na if ever may hindi um, ano, dumating, please insert me. <laughs> Kasi um, wala na talaga akong ibang time and I can't wait for August to, you know, do my medical exams. Thankfully, nagbunga naman. Kasi I was able to, uh, you know, do the exam. Everyone came naman nung, nung sa day na yun. Pero, um, the staff was just, you know, too generous or too kind to let me insert. So, shout out sa iyo. <laughs> so, yun. After that, um, after my medical examination, pumunta ako kaagad sa VFS Global in Cebu. Um, I had my biometrics there. After ka makapag medical exam and biometrics, um, purely waiting game na lang talaga. Kasi yung medical you know, exam facility, sila na yung magpo-forward ng result to the IMI. So, wait ka na lang and then um, the same with the biometrics. Si VFS na lang yung magpo-forward ng um, info mo to the IMI. So, all you need to do if you have an access to your um, IMI account or your visa application, dun matu-check mo if na-forward na ba nila. Otherwise, you need to follow up na dapat isend na nila para makapag-move na rin yung application mo. Before the pandemic, um, normally it would only take, you know, weeks maybe a month for you to get or receive the result of your application but since um, bago lang nag-open yung borders marami yung pending applicants so merong backlogs um, ang nangyari we have waited actually marami pa nga ngayon ang nag-wait na makuha yung result ng application nila so sa application ko it took almost um, three months. Um, yeah, kasi June 27 ako nag-apply. I got my visa grant notice um, last September 19. So almost three months din ako naghintay. Yun yung whole process or yun yung timeline ko. Happy to share. And if you have questions, feel free to comment it down below. I will um, reply or I will answer any of your questions. So, a few realizations or, you know, learnings. As long as you have, the, one, the money or the funds needed for the whole application, mas mabilis talaga siya. Yung iba, natatagalan kasi naghahanap pa sila ng money to, you know, pay for the process. So, if you have the funds, straight, straight lang yung application mo talaga. Hindi man every day nag-message sa yun yung agent mo. I realized na alam na nila yung timeline kasi. Alam na nila yung, yung whole process. So, um, whenever they say na you need to pay this na or you need to complete this, if you have the funds, then everything will go smoothly lang talaga. So, that's one. You really need to prepare the funds. Um, number two, do not procrastinate. <laughs> Kasi, most of us, you know, mahilig tayo sa mamaya na lang yan. Ah, hindi pa sinasabi ng agent, kaya later na lang yan. So, yung mga ganon. So, yeah, yun yung hindi ko ginawa. Kasi, when my agent told me na Okay, chill ka lang muna. Wait for the next step. Wait for my next email. Ginawa ko yung GTE ko. So, when the time came na kailangan na namin um, mag-proceed to the next step, hindi na ako nagmadali sa GTE ko kasi nagawa ko na siya ahead. So, little things or things like that, if you have, you know, the time, do it now then later para smooth lang application mo talaga. And the most important um, requirement na kailangan mo talaga is isang drum ng pasensya. 
make it two, make it three. <laughs> Grabe. You really need to be patient in everything. Wala naman talagang nakakaalam kung when i-assess ng case officer yung application mo. Especially now, na ang dami pa rin naghihintay ng um, result nila. And at the same time, marami rin nagpa-process, hindi lang ikaw. So, you need to be patient and pray. Of course, isurrender mo lang lahat kay God kasi He knows naman. Um, hindi ka makakarating sa kung saan ka ngayon if, you know, hindi decision ni God for you. So, there's a reason for everything. So, yun. That's uh, my timeline. The whole process. Um, for me, it's very mabilis lang talaga na tagalan lang sa pag-wait ng visa grant. But, definitely worth it when you get the immigrant notice email. <laughs> very worth it talaga. In terms of the gastos, I spent um, 250k all in na yan. So, that's including, of course, the enrollment, um, the agent fee, the um, medical, biometrics, the insurance. It's not including pa the airfare and the accommodation. Kasi, um, I'm confident naman na if I book ahead, I'll be able to really get the cheapest flights from any airline as long as makarating lang ako ng Australia. And, um, if you're, ano, masipag mag-research or maghanap ng accommodations, um, meron din namang, you know, shared accommodations, ng maraming shared accommodations, most especially sa mga Pinoy, um, meron din mga student accommodations, room for rent, all in ayan, um, fully furnished with electricity and with Wi-Fi now plus water. So yun, I hope you learned something from this video or from this vlog. And um, I'll try my best to do a different vlog for specifically the GTE, how I created mine. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment it down below sure to answer everything um yung sa ano sa knowledge ko lang. so yes um thank you for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe para happy tayong lahat thank you